Hey everyone, I'm Jonas Jürdecke, aka Jojo's Art, and I'm a digital fantasy artist from Berlin. Today I will show you how to draw a tiger head in a few simple steps, and I will use the Creator Z16P laptop by MSI, who are the sponsors of this video. In the first step, we will construct the basic shapes that will serve as a guideline for the drawing. We start with a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this will be the base for the tiger's head. Then we divide the circle into four equal parts and draw a smaller circle in the center of the lower half. This will be the tiger's snout. Now we draw two lines at the bottom of the circle and an inverted triangle on top. We also add a half circle below it all. These will be the guidelines for the mouth, nose and jaw of the tiger. Next, we divide the upper half of the bigger circle into quarters and at the first marking above the center of the circle, we draw another horizontal line. We then draw two lines up from the inverted triangle and two more lines all the way up from the outer edges of the smaller circle. Now we know exactly where to place the eyes of the tiger. They go inside the little squares above the snout. It's always a bit difficult to get the eyes symmetrical, so you can take as long as you need for this step. For the ears, we divide the triangles next to the eyes into halves and now have all the guides we need to draw little half circles. We draw another line inside to serve as the outer guide of the ear. To start with this part of the process, we lower the opacity of our tiger's framework and add another layer on top for the drawing. Since tigers have a dark ring around their eyes, we use thicker lines to indicate that. We also draw the pupil in the center of the eyeball, very close to the upper eyelid. For the nose, we add a slightly curved line on both sides and draw the nostrils by extending it to an S-shape, converging to the bottom of the triangle. We add a small vertical to divide the two S-shaped lines to form the two halves of the nose. To close the nose, we draw a curved line that kind of looks like a cursive M. We draw two lines up from the outer edges of the nose and also two lines close to the eyes that flow into the form of the snout. Around the bottom half of the snout, we use thicker lines that extend into the little triangle below the nose. For the tiger's mouth, we draw a curved W-shaped line below the upper snout and shade it in. Then we indicate a little bit of fur along the outline of the lower jaw. Around the eyes, tigers usually have white fur. To simulate this, we draw a line below each eye and a long, open and oval shape above them. We add another little line in the center between the eyes and then indicate another spot of white fur around the lower half of the snout. This shape should look like an upside down shark fin. For the ears, we draw around the guidelines we constructed earlier, but the outer part of the ears should square off. We also add fur lines to the inside. From the ears, we draw little masses of fur around the big circle. They can have different shapes and should follow the general outline of the head. Finally, we close the tiger's head by drawing the top line to connect the ears together. We add some small lines for short fur. Tiger stripes are usually symmetrical and follow a certain direction. They start from the center of the head and wrap around it in curved lines. I usually like to start with little shapes on the tiger's forehead that look like diamonds or arrowheads. From there we can let our imagination run wild, as long as we follow the basic directions I explained earlier. It usually looks pretty cool to have stripes extend from the eyes, and in this case I gave them an F-shape. The stripes usually get thicker around the outside edges of the head. We can use brush strokes to indicate some fur texture. We color in the top part of the ears and then draw small stripes on the snout leading to the nose. These also indicate where the whiskers will start. For these, we draw long, confident lines that are slightly curved downwards. I will work entirely in grayscale for this last part, but of course you can also work in color and go crazy with it. First, we fill in all the parts that would usually be orange in a light gray. This would include the upper part of the head and snout, as well as just under the eyes, except for the white spots we marked earlier. If you are using a traditional medium, you can use a light gray paint or a pencil with less pressure applied. We color the nose in a darker shade and then add some shadows also to the white parts of the fur. From here, depending on how realistic we want our tiger to look, we can work in more and more shadows, lights, texture and detail. Of course, you can also stylize the tiger in your unique way and let your imagination run wild. You can add a background, fantasy elements or anything else your artist heart desires. I can't wait to see what you come up with.